Hello everyone, my name is Beth, and today I'm going to be talking about um, a passage from Luke. Luke 17, verses 20 to 37. So recently the Lord has been asking me to just study straight from the NIV, because he's like, you need to teach where people are at, not the depths of different translations or different... Um, ways of seeing things, but actually look at the words that people are reading on a day-to-day -day basis. Not everyone reads the NIV, but for those who do, just to start asking the Lord, what's the revelation in, um, in this translation? So I'm reading from the NIV today, and let's get started. Luke 17, 20 to 37. Once, having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, here it is or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. So remember, I did a study uh, on the book of Mark a couple, maybe a year and a half ago, and I talked about how, you know, the, the gospel of Jesus was, according to the book of Mark, repent for the kingdom of God is here. So Jesus is saying, you're not going to carefully observe and somehow it's just going to appear out of nowhere. It's with inside of people and it's already here because he brought it. So when you repent, when you turn 180 degrees from sinning, then the kingdom of God comes inside of you. So then it says, verse 22, then Jesus said to his disciples, so he's no longer talking to the Pharisees. He's now specifically focusing on his disciples. The time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. So he's telling, the, telling them, number one, there might be more than one day of the Son of Man. And number two, their generation as disciples, they will not see it. They will not see one of the days of the Son of Man. Meaning, this generation that he's talking to, his disciples, they will not see what he's about to talk about what Jesus is saying. And when he says son of man, he's talking about himself. Verse 23, men will tell you there it is, or here it is, or here he is. Do not go running after them. Okay. So he's like, it's not going to happen. Even if they keep saying, oh, here's the son of man, or here's the son of man, it won't happen. Now he's going to talk about one of the sun days of the son of man and what will actually happen. For the Son of Man in his day will be like lightning, which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. So lightning is quick, and it lights up everything around it from one side to the other. But first, he, Jesus, must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. So he's telling his disciples, I'm going to be rejected by this generation. Then he goes on to say, just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. So this was judgment number one that Jesus is talking about. They thought everything was fine, life is good, and then all of a sudden judgment comes and destroyed them all. Verse 28, it was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. This is the second judgment that Jesus was talking about. The people didn't understand that by the sin that they were doing, that judgment comes as a consequence. And they were still buying and eating and drinking. But all of a sudden, instantly... They were done and destroyed. Verse 30. It will be just like this on the day the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the roof of his house with his goods inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. 
one will be taken and the other left. Where, Lord, they asked. For example, the disciples are saying, where are these people going to go? And he replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. So many people have taken this out of context and said, this proves a rapture. Did you know that in the early 1900s, less than 1% of the Christian population believed in es end time eschatology that people believe in today? Do you know that there was large sums of money put behind changing people's ideas to make them docile and not willing to fight in the spiritual battles that we face every day? This here, Jesus is saying, one will be in bed and one will be taken. Where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. This is not a, a rapture. This is all of a sudden people will be dead. And it's a judgment. When the Son of Man is revealed, so much God has been talking to people about how his glory is going to cover the earth. His glory is going to cover the earth. Well, the glory of the Lord is his presence. His presence is holy. And when the revealing of the Son of Man comes, holiness will cover the earth. And because of that, there will be death. There will be those who cannot stand in his presence, who cannot stay. And the Lord's been talking to me and Jonathan specifically about how there's going to be death in the church as well. Because he told us that it doesn't mean that they're going to go to hell, for they love the Lord. It just means that they have not accepted where he's going. He's doing a new thing. And he's about to do something really new on the earth that he said he's never done before. Something is coming. And so today when I was reading this and I'm like, God, I speculate that you're going to come and do exactly what you say you're going to do. And he said, share your speculations. So this is what I speculate. I speculate that Jesus is coming in an instant, in a flash. And he will be revealed. Like bright. Like he's coming and something's going to happen where no one can say God is not real. And here this passage says that some are sleeping and some are working. So I believe it's going to be a global event where some are sleeping and die. And some are working and die. And perhaps, I don't know, this is speculation. Perhaps the angel of death is waiting and ready. And I want to talk to you today. If you don't know Jesus, today is the day of salvation. I don't know anyone who says, I wish I didn't know Jesus. He will change your life. He loves you tremendously. He is the doorway to the Father. And the Father longs to have a relationship with you. And today is the day of salvation. Get right with the Lord. Something is coming. On the other hand, if you have been a Christian all your life, start seeking the Lord. God, what are you doing? What are you saying in this time? What are you doing? Because he is removing his hand from old ways. There is new wineskins right now, and he wants you on his side. You know, when, when the angel came to Mary and told her, Mary, you're going to have a child. The Holy Spirit's going to come on you. And he is going to rule from the line of David. And his line will never end. He will rule forever. She had no concept of a spiritual ruling. She thought, probably... Oh, he's going to get married. He's going to take over Rome. He's going to, he's going to rule again from Jerusalem. He's going to sit as king. And then when that didn't happen, like they, they all thought he was going to rule from Jerusalem and become king. He was in line. He was part of the line of David. They knew the genealogy. 
that's what's supposed to would have happened if they looked at it from natural eyes. But, but Jesus came to save the whole earth, to save the whole world, to save all of us from our sin and to reconcile us back to the Father. And so I'm not 100% sure what's coming, but I know that something is coming. Something is coming. And it might just be that what Jesus is saying here in Luke chapter 17, that he might just do it exactly as he says he's going to do it. It might just happen exactly that way because he kept telling his disciples, I'm going to die. And on the third day, I'm going to raise back to the life. And they had no clue what he was talking about, but he was telling them point blank. This is what's coming. This is what's going to happen. And they didn't want to believe it. So I believe here, Jesus is telling us exactly what will happen. There is going to be great death on the earth. And I believe he's giving us time. He's giving us time. Are you on the Lord's side? Because he wants you to be. And his ways are just completely different than anything you've ever done. Like, I am sold out for the Lord. I'm on the Lord's side. And we've lost a great deal because of it. But I am willing to lose it all for the Lord. He is worth it. You know, right now he has me grocery shopping for people. That's what I do for my job. I grocery shop for people. And no one else understands around me but my husband. And that's okay. We're on the same team. We, we have the same goal. We are for the Lord. We are for the Lord. We will do exactly what he wants us to do. We will say yes to him. Yes to his plan. And I hope that you'll do the same. I hope you'll say, yes, Lord, what are you doing right now? How can I help you? What needs to be done? You know, if everyone who believed in Jesus did what God was asking of them, this world would be a completely different place. Anyways, I want to encourage you in that. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. And uh, we'll talk soon. Bye for now.